So, in the previous lectures, uh, we had uh, uh, derived the throughputs uh, for the TCP uh, in networks with uh, high bandwidth delay products. So, we will continue uh, this, that discussion and uh, we know that the TCP has uh, basically two phases, one is the slow start phase and another one is the uh, congestion avoidance phase. So, when we are trying to determine uh, the throughput uh, of a TCP in a network, then we need to determine the throughput in both the slow start phase as well as the throughput in the congestion avoidance uh, phase. Uh, and the uh, method that we had followed is uh, that, uh, so now there are two cases that can arise in the slow start phase. Uh, in one case, uh, uh, you know, uh, no buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase and if no buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase, then the window evolves up to the slow start threshold, uh, which is uh, which is a priori set uh, equal to half the maximum window size and then from then onwards, uh, the congestion avoidance phase starts. So, if, if no buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase, then the window evolves up to the slow start threshold variable and then uh, from then onwards, the congestion avoidance phase starts and in the congestion avoidance phase if a packet loss is detected uh, 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 due to the uh, let us say triple duplicate acknowledgement then the window drops to uh, w by 2. On the other hand if the buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase, so if a buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase then the uh, window size drops down to uh, w is equal to 1 that is it becomes 1 again and then again a uh, uh, second slow start phase starts immediately, uh, but however, this time the slow start threshold variable is uh, set equal to uh, the half the window size, uh, you know, at which the packet loss was detected in the slow start phase. So, in, in, in both these cases, uh, you know, where the buffer overflow occurs in the slow start uh, phase and where the buffer overflow does not occur in the slow start phase. So, there are two cases and we had analyzed both these cases and had determined, you know, the average uh, uh, cycle time and also the average number of packets uh, that would be transmitted uh, during the cycle. Now, today what we will do is that we will try to analyze the congestion avoidance phase. Okay. Now, as we had said that uh, uh, since uh, the congestion avoidance phase starts after the slow start phase, so since there were two cases of the slow start phase, there will also be therefore the uh, two initial conditions for the congestion avoidance phase corresponding to the uh, two cases of the slow start phase. So, let us see you know what those cases will be. So, in the congestion avoidance phase, In so, we say that the congestion avoidance phase starts from the initial window size. So, this is equal to the initial window size from of the congestion avoidance phase, right? And and this initial window size that would be equal to uh, W max uh, by two uh, if uh, w b is greater than uh, w max by 2 and it would be equal to minimum of uh, uh, w b minus 1 uh, w max uh, by 4 uh, if w b is less than or equal to w max by 2. Now, this case uh, corresponds to the case where uh, where uh, no packet loss is detected in the slow start phase. That means, you know, this phase corresponds to the case where no buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase and this case corresponds to the fact where the buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase and since in this case the buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase, uh, you know, the window evolves. Uh, so, it is something like this that the window evolves up to a certain point here and then the window drops to 1 and then again, you know, it goes up to this point. So, and from then onwards, the congestion avoidance phase start. So, for this second case, the congestion avoidance phase W naught will become equal to minimum of W B minus 1 or W max by 4. Now, the definition of W B we have already seen 
so WB is uh, um, is is the window size, uh, you know, the maximum window size at which the buffer overflow uh, at which the buffer overflow will occur. So let me uh, just uh, recap the uh, definition of the WB. Okay, so we had seen. Uh, WB is the maximum window size at which the buffer overflow occurs and we had seen that approximate value of WB will be equal to twice the bottleneck buffer size, right. So, so, so that is how we have defined WB. So, if WB is greater than W max by 2, which was the initial slow start threshold, okay, this was actually the initial st slow start threshold, it is WT. If that is so, then no buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase and the initial window size in the congestion avoidance phase is W max by 2. However, if uh, WB is less than or equal to W max by 2, that means the maximum window size at which the buffer overflow can occur happens to be less than the slow start threshold variable and therefore the congestion avoidance phase will start from here. So now we will try to analyze the throughput in the congestion avoidance phase. So so what we will do is that we will do the throughput analysis in congestion avoidance phase. Now what uh, we do is that even though uh, you know we know that the window evolution uh, takes place in a step like fashion in the sense that uh, whenever an acknowledgement comes, uh, the window uh, size increases by uh, 1 by W in the congestion avoidance phase. So, when the acknowledgement for all the W packets uh, uh, have arrived, then the window size actually increases by 1 in the congestion avoidance phase. So, uh, if uh, now the acknowledgements for all the uh, uh, packets uh, sent uh, during a uh, uh, window size is expected to arrive within a round trip time. So, what happens uh, within a round trip time the window size actually increases by 1. So, the window size actually follows a step like uh, uh, you know increase. Uh, however, for the simplicity of the analysis we assume that the window is increasing you know in a linear fashion and therefore as we had discussed in the previous lectures also the window evolution is assumed to be having a sawtooth pattern uh, in the congestion avoidance phase okay so so we are assuming it to be a continuous linear increase and whenever the packet loss is detected the window drops to w by 2 and and so on okay so now let us define uh, the quantities like dw by dt which is the rate of increase of the window size dw by dt is the rate of window growth and let us define dA by dt which is the rate of arrival of acknowledgement rate of arrival of acknowledgement. Now, we know that dW by dA that is the rate of window growth with respect to the acknowledgement arrival is actually given by 1 by W. Now, this is because as we have seen that the window size increases for every acknowledgement the window size increases by 1 by W. So, therefore, dW by dA is actually 1 by W. Now, dA by dt that is the rate of arrival of acknowledgement and let us denote it by lambda. This is actually minimum of W by t into mu, where t is the round trip time and mu happens to be the bottleneck service rate. right? So, that is dA by dt. So, we know that dW by dA is 1 by W, dA by dt is minimum of this. So, in that case then dW by dt that is the rate of window growth that will be equal to 1 by t if 
w is less than or equal to mu t and it will be equal to mu by w if w is greater than you know mu t okay now that depends upon if w by t is actually happens to be you know uh, greater than mu then you know da by dt will be mu okay and then uh, you know dw by dt will become mu by w however if uh, this happens to be minimum then da by dt will be w by t and and dw by da is 1 by w then we will get dw by dt is 1 by t now let us try to understand you know how how we have arrived at this result just to uh, you know understand this result i'll just explain this with a diagram okay now you know let us say this is a sender and you know this is the sort of receiver and so now when we send uh, let us say the window size is 4 so when we send 4 packets 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, let us consider the case where you know w is less than mu t right. So, the window size is actually happens to be less than you know the delay bandwidth product. Now, what happens the acknowledgement actually starts arriving after the round trip time t. Okay, so if you if you start the time here, then you know after the t time interval, you know this acknowledgement t will actually arrive. Okay, and you know this, uh, and after one by mu times, I will receive the acknowledgement for this third packet, and I will receive the acknowledgement of the fourth packet. Okay, so now this this is the total window size w remember and the the distance between the 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 separation between the two packet is actually 1 by mu that is the service time so so therefore you know if you consider this time this time happens to be equal to w by mu okay now you can see that in this case when w is and and, and so on and from this you know you will start transmitting then you know one packet and, and 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 so on the window size increases by one now in this case you can see that approximately w x they will arrive in t seconds right approximately okay so therefore you know d a by d t happens to be following of w by t so that is how we will get this result that d a by d t will be equal to you know if w by t happens to be less than mu then it will be equal to w by t. Now, let us consider a case where let us say w is equal to mu t okay. in this case itself you consider that w is equal to mu t. Now, when that happens our scenario changes something like this 1 2 third packet and the fourth packet now by the time you have sent you know you started sending the fourth packet your acknowledgement for the first packet should have arrived and then after mu second this acknowledgement should have arrived and after another 1 by mu second this acknowledgement should have arrived and, and, and so on. So, as a result you can actually see this window ok this happens to be equal to you know t is equal to w by mu second. So, here what happens is that w acknowledgements they arrive in w by mu seconds and therefore, d a by d t happens to be mu and even even if it is greater than even if w is greater than mu t then even d a by d t will remain mu. So, that is how you know we have arrived at this relationships that d a by d t is actually happens to be minimum of either w by t or mu right. 
So, so what we have actually uh, tried to demonstrate is that that how the growth of window evolution and how the growth of arrival of acknowledgement takes place in the congestion avoidance phase. So, now, now we have got the basic differential equation of uh, uh, the basic differential equation governing the dynamics of the window evolution in the congestion avoidance phase. Okay. So, now let us look at this basic differential equation which is uh, w by t is equal to 1 by t and mu by w. Now, consider the first case. Okay. So, here we will consider let us say the case 1 okay, that is w is is less than or less than or equal to mu t. So, for what we are assuming is that that the window size is actually less than or equal to uh, mu t. In that case d w by d t is given by 1 by t. Okay. So, if I plot, so you start the window from w 0 before this you are having the slow start phase you you increase the window right and increases the window and w is less than or equal to mu t now let us say that the window size becomes equal to mu t till this period the the window evolution or or uh, the window evolution is followed by dw by dt equal to 1 by t right and let us say the time taken to reach this is the duration of that interval is let us say t1 right so if this is so dw by dt is equal to 1 by t right so we need to determine what is the time taken okay what is the time taken by the window to reach the size of mu t and that is given by t 1 is equal to t times mu t minus w naught right. This is this is obtained by simply solving this differential equations which means that t into w is actually equal to d t okay. and uh, we integrate this for the d w the limit happens to be from w naught to mu and for the dt this is from 0 to t1 if you assume the time to be here equal to 0. So, as a result we have shown that a time taken by the window to reach mu t is equal to this and how and the number of packets and number of packets transmitted during this interval. The number of packets transmitted during this interval as we have seen is the area under this curve. Okay. So, number of packets transmitted during this interval is given by the area under this curve that will tell you how many number of packets have been transmitted during the condition avoidance phase and, and that is given by n 1 equal to w naught t 1 plus 1 by 2 t 1 into mu t minus you know w naught okay and we can substitute here the value for you know uh, t 1 and and we will get as uh, w naught t mu t minus w naught plus 1 by t mu t minus w naught square okay so so this comes immediately after this now uh, when the window size reaches this mu t then after this you know this equation is valid that is dw by t is equal to mu by w all right so the second phase the second phase that starts okay when the window size w is greater than mu t then the governing equation is d w by d t to be equal to mu by w. Okay. And let us assume that, that this window okay, reaches w max you know and 
and to reach this it requires another time t 2. Now, during this interval you know which equation is governing this equation d w by d t is equal to mu by w. Okay. So, we need to solve this equation with the initial conditions of okay, the initial conditions of mu t and you know the final is w max. Okay. So, therefore, you know during this conditions we get if you differentiate this equation w square t will be equal to 2 into mu t minus t 1 plus mu t square you know where, where t denotes the time between uh, time during you know this interval right. Now, the, 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 the cycle terminates when the the cycle terminates when uh, window size w you know uh, becomes equal to w max and therefore, the t 2 interval is given by w square max minus mu t square upon you know 2 mu right because then suppose this is the time interval which is time t is let us say t prime. So, when t becomes equal to t prime and here we have assumed the time to be equal to sort of 0 then you know t prime uh, minus t 1 that becomes equal to t 2. Okay. So, so that is how you know uh, we determine the time. Now, the number of packets which are transmitted uh, during this interval since the link is fully utilized okay, uh, since w is since during this uh, case w is greater than mu t the link is fully utilized and all the packets are being served with the bottleneck service rate mu and the cycle lasts for a total time period of t 2 the number of packets which are transmitted will be simply given by mu into t. So, the number of packets transmitted during t 2 the number of packets transmitted during t 2 which is n 2 which is equal to n 2 is given by mu t 2. Okay. So, now that that uh, so now what we have essentially done is that we have determined okay, the cycle time of the slow start phase and the cycle time of the congestion avoidance phase and have also tried to determine what is the number of packets which are transmitted during the slow start phase and during the congestion avoidance phase in one cycle. Okay. And so, if you divide the number of packets transmitted during one cycle and divide by the so total cycle time, we will get the throughput. So, let us see what is the total duration of the congestion avoidance phase. The duration of the congestion avoidance phase, you know, as we have seen, okay, T of congestion avoidance phase is actually T 1 plus T 2, this is the duration of the congestion avoidance phase and N C A that is the number of packets transmitted is you know N 1 plus N 2. What about, so this is the you know uh, congestion avoidance duration, congestion avoidance cycle time and this is number of packets transmitted during congestion avoidance cycle. As far as the slow start, uh, uh, slow start threshold is concerned, uh, we, uh, uh, we know uh, uh, similarly uh, that in the case of slow start, uh, we had determined uh, the uh, the number of packets transmitted during the slow start threshold and uh, uh, which which was this. So, in in the case where the buffer overflow occurs in the slow start phase, uh, there were two phases. So, T 1 1 s was the time taken for the W T to reach W B and this was one cycle and then we determine apart from T 1 1 s, we determine the N 1 1 which was the number of packets 
successfully transmitted and then we determine T12 okay, the second slow start phase and the number of packets transmitted during this phase. So, therefore, you know the 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 slow start thresh the slow start phase. So, I, I say slow start phase it will be given by T 1 1 s in the first T 1 2 s okay, and this is equal to the slow start phase cycle. Okay. In the case when the buffer overflow occurs if buffer overflow occurs during slow start phase and n s s is given by n 1 1 s plus n 1 2 s that we have already determined okay. and this is the number of packets which are transmitted during the slow start phase. So, therefore, you know the throughput and of course, if the buffer overflow does not occur during the slow start phase, then also we have determined the cycle time in the slow start phase and the number of packets which are successfully transmitted during the slow start phase. So, so therefore, the throughput is so otherwise, you know this will be equal to uh, just uh, uh, you know uh, or it will be equal to T 1 s uh, or it will be equal to N 1 s that we have already determined. And therefore, you know in that case the throughput of uh, a TCP throughput expression is given by okay, uh, N S S plus N C A divide by T S S plus T C A that is the uh, the number of uh, packets transmitted during the slow start phase, the number of packets transmitted during the congestion avoidance phase divide by the slow start cycle time plus the congestion avoidance cycle time we will get the average throughput. Now, if you numerically uh, if you numerically compute uh, uh, these throughput for various values of beta, uh, we can determine uh, the numerical values of the throughput that would exist uh, for uh, determining the TCP throughput in a network with uh, uh, high bandwidth uh, delay product. So, you know this gives an insight uh, into determining an expression uh, for the TCP throughput. In fact, we can see that if we try to compute this expression for various values of beta, we can see that when beta is uh, approximately equal to let us say 0.32, uh, uh, the TCP throughput uh, is uh, is approximately uh, 0.8 and after that if beta is uh, even 0 0.8 if we knew, even if you increase then the TCP throughput uh, goes to you know 0 0.9 only. So, you can see that a threshold effect takes place at, uh, at beta uh, approximately equal to 0 0.33 uh, where uh, we had already shown that uh, in a high bandwidth uh, uh, delay network products a threshold effect exists at the window size uh, uh, for uh, uh, for the normalized buffer size beta uh, uh, to be equal to 1 by 3 that is 0 0.33. So, so this get, this results you know uh, therefore, gets confirmed if uh, we try to determine an expression uh, for the TCP throughput. Now, in this case you know we have analyzed uh, where we have considered um, uh, a simplified view where we have considered a uh, source destination pair single TCP connection and a single uh, bottleneck link and we have considered the case of a high bandwidth delay networks. So, that means, uh, the bottleneck service rate multiplied by the delay happens to be high and, and under that situations we had tried to determine what will be the values of the throughput in the slow start phase and in the uh, congestion avoidance phase. Uh, now, in the next analysis that uh, uh, we would like to uh, show is the an expression for determining the TCP throughput when we consider the uh, random losses. Okay. So, 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 so that is another uh, way of determining the TCP throughput when the losses occurs randomly with certain packet loss probability which is p. Note that a, a simplified analysis of the TCP throughput when the packet loss occurs with a probability p we have already discussed and we have shown uh, that the TCP throughput is uh, inversely proportional to the round trip 
time uh, and it is also inversely proportional to the square root of the packet loss probability. So, this is an important result and expression uh, for the TCP throughput when the packet loss occurs uh, you know uh, randomly. Uh, so, the TCP throughput is inversely proportional to the square root of the packet loss probability and that analysis we do we did with a very very simplified assumptions we will try to refine uh, this analysis uh, uh, you know uh, in today's lectures and see uh, uh, what is the exact expression for the TCP throughput and we would also try to show that that expression actually uh, it degenerates uh, uh, to the expression for the TCP throughput analysis that we had done in our previous lectures where the TCP throughput was shown to be uh, inversely proportional to the square root of the packet loss probability. So, let us you know uh, try to do that analysis and, and that analysis we will do only for the congestion avoidance phase. Okay. Now, remember that this particular analysis that we have done for the congestion avoidance phases, we have not assumed random loss, we have assumed that a pipe exists and uh, the pipe has a bottleneck node uh, which has a buffer capacity of B and uh, the bottleneck service rate happens to be mu and the round trip time is t. So, therefore, the, uh, the, the maximum number of unacknowledged packets that can be injected into the network will be equal to b plus mu t. Why? Because the bottleneck buffer has the capacity of storing b packets and the mu t packets can be in the transit. Therefore, the total number of unacknowledged packets that can be there in the network will be equal to b plus mu t and therefore, that will be equal to the maximum window size and if you try to inject packets more than this window size then a buffer overflow will occur. So, this was our assumption in the analysis. Now, what we will try to do is that we will not assume uh, that uh, uh, about the buffer capacities of the bottleneck node, but we will try to assume that a packet loss occurs at some bottleneck node with a probability of p. Okay, and then determine an expression for the TCP throughput as a function of the packet loss probability p. So, let me just uh, draw a sketch of uh, you know that analysis, we will make certain assumptions and then try to see how do we carry out the analysis of the uh, TCP throughput. So, so this is this we do as the TCP throughput analysis for random loss. Now, this has certain assumptions and the assumptions are, uh, we assume first of all that uh, each acknowledgement uh, acknowledges uh, B packets uh, actually the, till now we have done the analysis where B was assumed to be equal to 1 in, in typical number of B could be equal to 2 and, and this is our cumulative acknowledgements. Then and of course, each act as we had assumed increases the window size by 1 by w. Now, total number of acknowledgements that they will arrive. Now, remember that each acknowledgement is acknowledging b packets and in a window size of w we are sending total w packets. So, therefore, the total number of acknowledgements that will arrive will be w by b and therefore, at the end of a round trip time the window size will increase by w by b okay, into 1 by w. So, therefore, it will increase total by 1 by b. Okay. So, therefore, you know the window size at the end of one round trip time will be w plus 1 by b. Okay. So, this is this is an important assumptions okay, uh, that each acknowledgement each acknowledgement is acknowledging b packets. 
The second thing that uh, we assume is that packet is lost in a round independently independently of any packet lost in other round. Round means, uh, so you have a window size of W, we are sending these W packets okay, back to back and, uh, 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 and when these W packets reach the destinations, the acknowledgement arrive uh, and, and this takes one round trip time, this we call it to be uh, a round. So, in one round what will happen is that uh, W by B acknowledgements will arrive and the window size will increase by 1 by B. So, so this is what is called as one round. We are assuming that packet is lost independently of any packet lost in other rounds and also if a packet is lost then all other packets okay, following that in that round are also assumed to be lost. Okay. So, uh, packet loss in different rounds are happen independently, but if in a particular round, if a packet loss occurs, then all other packets following that uh, uh, packet will be considered to be lost. And in this analysis, we are assuming that packet loss can be detected, you know, by by triple duplicate acknowledgement. So, what is commonly called as TD ACK or DUPACKS. We also make uh, an assumption that uh, receiver's window size is not limited by the receiver's advertised uh, flow control window. So, we, you know, just to uh, make uh, our matters simple in terms of the window evolutions, right? Now, we define uh, again uh, n t to be the uh, number of packets. transmitted in the interval of 0 to t. So, this call is n t transmitted during the interval of 0 to t, then the throughput, then the TCP throughput uh, per unit time that is the number of packets transmitted per unit time is throughput is given by uh, n t upon t and we call as the long terms steady state TCP throughput will be assumed to be you know limit t tends to infinity n t by t. Okay. So, now with this the long with we have determined the long term st uh, uh, steady state throughput and let p denote uh, the probability of packet loss uh, given that that probability of a packet loss given that this is the first packet in the round to be lost. in its round to be lost. Th that means, it is the probability of a packet loss given that no other packet is lost in this round, right. So, that is what the assumption is. Now, so the window evolution takes place something like this.
So, what we are assuming here is uh, that the window, so this is like increase in window by 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 1 and, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, so, so therefore, you know this is equal to 2 rounds uh, if b is assumed to be equal to 2. Okay. So, or if it is b then it is b rounds so in b rounds the window will increase by 1. So, we are assuming a staircase functions and now this at this point we assume that a packet loss is detected due to triple duplicate acknowledgement. Okay. So, so this we call it to be a triple duplicate acknowledgement the ith period. Okay. And 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 and, and uh, so this is the window size to be equal to W1, and this is W2, and so on. So this is, you know, TDP1, TDP2, and so on. So we say that define TDPI to be the ith triple uh, do pack period. Let us say yi is equal to number of packets. sent in ith uh, you know triple two pack period that means in ith triple duplicate acknowledgement and wi happens to be the window size at the end of the period And A i, so this is A 1 which is happens to be the duration of the ith period. So, we say that A i is the duration of the ith triple duplicate acknowledge. Now, it is easy to show that the W i which is the window size at the end of the ith period is a Markov process. It's a Markov chain. It forms a Markov chain, and moreover, it is considered to be a Markov regenerative process. Right now, the regenerative process means the cycle repeats. So, really speaking, if you consider is it's the sequence which is W1, W2, W3, and so on, it forms a Markov chain because the window size at the end of the period really depends upon what was the window size at the end of the previous period because that is the initial window size, okay, uh, and uh, whatever the uh, number of packets that arrived. Uh, uh, during this period and since the packet loss is uh, assumed to be independent of uh, 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 you know the packet losses that occurred in the previous cycle. So, therefore, you know the W i happens to be a Markov uh, process. It is also a Markov regenerative process and it earns a reward and this rewards are denoted by y i which is actually the number of packets sent in this period. So, they, so they, they constitutes to be the reward. So, if you apply the reward renewal theory then it is easy to see that the throughput that is the number of packets uh, which are transmitted uh, per unit time uh, is given by you know the TCP throughput th will be given by expected value of y i is give, uh, divide by the expected value of a uh, which happens to be uh, the duration of this uh, you know uh, the regenerative cycle. So, uh, typically you know if you want to determine how many number of packets uh, transmitted per unit time during this cycle. So, we will say that number of packets transmitted is y i uh, divide by the cycle time which is a i but this is a Markov regenerative process. So, we can say that long term steady state throughput will be given by expected value of y that is expected value of number of packets transmitted during this period divide by the expected value of the uh, period itself. Okay. So, so, this way you know we can determine the TCP throughput. So, our objective therefore, is to determine an expression for the expected value of y and expected value of a. So, this is what our objective is and this is what you know uh, we will try to determine. So, now let us concentrate you know our attention on the specific window evolutions that we had seen. So, uh, let us say that this ith TDP period. So, v star. So, for the in this diagram you know uh, assume that b equal to 2. So, it happens something like this. Uh, so, we start from w i minus 1 by 2. Okay. 
so the window size increases like this The window size is increasing uh, so as you can see here that the window size here was 3 let us say w i minus 1 2 so we are sending packets 1 2 3 and at the end of so this is one round okay so at the end of this round uh, an acknowledgement will come and the window size will increase uh, by uh, you know 1 by b and in this case b is 2 we have assumed so it will increase by 0 0.5 and uh, and after you know uh, two rounds the window size will actually increase by 1 so here you know we can say that this is b and this is b and so on so and and here the window size increase i have shown it to be uh, by 1 so this is 1 triple loop back period and let us say w i now is the maximum window size at which it reaches and packet loss is detected. So, now let us say uh, that this is the last round we assume. So, this is the penultimate round in the sense that a packet loss occurs in this round. So, let us say that alpha i is happens to be the first packet which gets lost in first packet lost in okay uh, this triple do pack period and let us say that x i is the round where this packet loss occurs round where alpha i is lost and this is the penultimate round x i and let us say that this packet alpha i is lost here and after this all the consecutive packets are lost so all these packets are lost now the the when the triple duplicate acknowledgement takes place by the time you know in the last round some more packets also have been transmitted right so these many packets have al already been transmitted and, and and the receiver will receive you know the indication that a packet loss has occurred only when these many packets have already been sent. So, this is like the the last round. Now, what we will try to do is then we will try to determine what is the number of packets expression for y i that is the number of packets transmitted. We will determine an expression for uh, uh, a i that is the cycle duration and then we will determine their expectation values. Okay. And, uh, and 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 from that we can easily determine the tcp throughput so we'll we will discuss this uh, how to determine the value of yi and how to determine the value of ai